Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. It's my birthday! Well, it is when this video is going up and I'm... Well, I don't know if excited is really the word because I'm another year older, but you know, it's been another year and it's been a very interesting year. So I'm just, you know, happy that I'm still around, that I've got things going on and that it's good. I will say I've been really sick all weekend and I've only just recovered when I'm filming this. So if my voice sounds really weird or if I appear a little listless at times or I forget things, it's because I've pretty much been run down and emotionally drained all week. We've had a massive, massive week at work. We had our school ball where all of the kids, so this is prep to grade six kids, go out and they do ballroom dancing with partners in front of their parents. And we had to do that over two nights and I agreed to go both nights, which I don't regret because I absolutely love it and the kids really get a kick out of it. But it was two very late nights of working all day, then working all night and coming home. And somehow in this strange mess, I managed to read six books, which I don't know how I did that. And then on Friday night, I just got really, really sick. So it's been a, it's been a bit of an adventure to get here. So I'm just sort of glad that by the time this video goes up, I'm not sick on my birthday because that was a very real possibility. And that is a very long-winded opening intro. So I do apologize. And yes, I'm wearing a flower crown because why not? It's spring here. Not that it's acting like it outside today, but it is spring. So this is my reading wrap up from the 9th to the 15th of September. As I said, I read six books. I read a total of 2,082 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 182 books. This week, four of the books that I read were for the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon, which I'm co-hosting with, with lots of lovely people. I did manage to correct my very poor planning choices with reading from last week, where I managed to muck up the order of what I was reading quite significantly, but I have since fixed it and I'm now back on track back on track, so it's all good. I have been trying to be a little bit more active on my Instagram stories where I've sort of been vlogging what's going on during the day. Although I did drop off in the middle of last week when the school ball was on and everything because I was just so tired. The first book that I read this week was Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie, and this was for the Tome Infinity Challenge. It was for the Challenge Asteroid Belt Read a Space Opera. This is a very strange book. It is told from the perspective of a ship and the main character, Breck, is the artificial intelligence behind a giant warship. And she is, she's used to controlling, she, I say she, it, it is used to controlling thousands and thousands of soldiers. So the ship's intelligence was actually sort of downloaded into the brains of human bodies that could then do the bidding of the ship. So it was quite a very powerful thing. And then suddenly all this is taken away from Breck and Breck is determined to find out exactly what has happened and to bring about justice against those people who destroyed her. And it is a really, really complex and intriguing idea. And I really enjoyed it. This was published in 2013 by Orbit and I gave it four out of five stars. I am looking forward to continuing the series. I don't know when I'm gonna to get to the series again, but I am definitely very curious to see what happens to Breck. For the Challenge Mercury reader book under 250 pages, I read Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This was originally published in 1966 by Millennium. This is published, this edition is published by Galance and I gave it four out of five stars. This is kind of a really heartbreaking read and this is science fiction set on Earth because it follows the story of Charlie who has an IQ of about 68 at the beginning of the book and he's writing progress reports for a experiment that he is involved in. The experiment is designed to enhance the IQ of people with low IQs and to see if you can create a super smart individual. And it's based off research done on a mouse called Algernon. And as the story progresses, you see how Charlie's life changes through his progress reports because at the beginning, his progress reports are written quite phonetically. You can tell that he doesn't have much experience reading and writing and he doesn't really have the knowledge of how to spell words and to structure sentences and even just engage on an emotional level. But as the experiment progresses, you see that change and you see the change in him and his personality as a result. It is a very sad story. I have to say, I didn't cry in it because I'm, I'm very, I'm, it's very hard to make me cry in a book. It was very poignant and it really does beg the question, do you have the right to meddle in people's lives in this way? And what are the consequences of that? So it was a really, really great book. I highly recommend it. It almost doesn't read as science fiction. And I think that means a lot of people can actually engage with it. For the challenge, the sun, read a book with a solar 
disaster. I took it as solar issue because this is not quite that, but it does sort of fit it in a very loose way if you stretch the prompt in strange ways like I did. So this is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This was published in 2016 by Orbit. I gave it four out of five stars. It is a science fiction slash fantasy book. In this it's more fantasy at the moment, but I can see where it will actually stretch out into a bit of a science fiction thread later on. I actually, this is one of those books that I had to listen to other people talk about it after I read it, just to sort my thoughts out. And that doesn't happen very often because this is quite a dense book that you get thrown in right at the deep end straight away. You have, it's a sink or swim book and some people will either like that or will, they'll hate it. I really liked it, even if I didn't understand it. And I think in my Insta stories, when I was vlogging about this, I was saying that a lot. I'm like, I, I don't think I really understand it, but I do actually really like what I'm reading. So this is essentially the story of a woman who has access to the ability to control seismic energy, who's going on a search to find her daughter after her husband has kidnapped the daughter and killed her son because, of, because both her and the children have this ability. This ability to control these seismic energies is, is reviled in this place. And if you have this ability, you are either outcast or you are taken in to this organization called the Fulcrum where you are trained, but are essentially a servant of these people. You don't really have any free will. You do as you're told. This story is told from three perspectives. The first is a young girl called Damaya who has just been discovered as one of these people who can control the energy. The second perspective is Cyanite, who is a young woman who is going on her first mission and she is a four ringer so she has four bands of power and the the rings are the way that they categorize your abilities and the highest it goes is 10 rings 10 rings is just sort of signifies that you are at the top of the group you could actually be a much higher than that but they don't really document it any further than that cyanite has four rings and she's paired up with alabaster who has 10 rings and is very very powerful and the third perspective is actually a second person perspective. It was really interesting because it puts you in the position of the character and the character's name is Essen and she, this is the woman whose daughter has been kidnapped and she's on the trail of her husband to try and track down her daughter. All of these stories eventually interweave and the one thing that I will say, the sort of sink or swim element in this is the fact that you don't know exactly when each of these characters stories are being told, which one is in the future, which is the past. Are they the past? Are they the present? You sort of have to read the story to understand that. And I don't really want to explain that to you guys because I think it is really important to read it and discover it because once things are revealed, the way the story changes in subtle ways is very, very clever. And I just, I need to know what happens. It was just gripping. And N.K. Jemisin has a really easy writing style, so it was very easy to read, even though it was a little bit confusing at times. And the last book that I read for Tome Infinity this week is the Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. This was originally published in 1969. This edition is published by Galance. And I hate to say it, I gave it three out of five stars. I don't think it's a bad book and I, I, I can see why people have given it high ratings. I think this just falls into that bracket of classic for me. And I just, I, I struggled to get into this and I struggled to pay attention to it, even though I really, really liked the ideas and the concepts behind it and sort of the diversity that was represented in this book. I just, I struggled. And I don't know what it is. It may have been because I was sick. So I, I'm going to have to come back and revisit this at another point when I'm not so tired and unwell. It is the story of Jen Li Ai, who is an envoy to this race of people who live on a essentially frozen planet where winter is the main season. There's very, very little sun. It's always cold or snowy or something. Everyone who lives on winter is androgynous and at different points in their life can be either male or female, can be either a mother or a father, depending on where they are. Genley becomes drawn into sort of the politics of this world as he's trying to encourage them to join the group of 80 something planets that he belongs to as a representative. And this group really is apparently there to help build trade, either through actual physical trade or just through information trade. And the politics of winter are so volatile and unstable that it's very hard for him to actually be heard in the way that he wants to be heard. It's a complex book. 
It's not difficult to read, but it is complex and I think you have to wrap your head around it a little bit. I'm glad I read it and I do really want to come back to it because I actually think I need to give it more time. And really quickly, I read two more books in the Sci Changeling series by Nalini Singh. So I read book five, which is Hostage to Pleasure. And that was published in 2011 by Galant. And I gave that one three out of five stars. This one follows Dorian, who is a leopard sentinel and Ashire, who is a psi medic. And we met Ashire in a previous book. She essentially is trying to escape from her current situation and she works quite well with Dorian and it's about their relationship and all sorts of things. I really, really love Dorian and basically the three stars are for Dorian. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember much about the story. So it's three stars because I know I enjoyed it and I really liked reading about Dorian and the way he interacts within his pack. I also really, actually, I will say I really like the element of the fact that Ashaya has a child and she is trying very hard to keep him safe, particularly from someone in her own family. And Dorian helps her to do that. And then I read Branded by Fire, which is book six in the Sci Changeling series and was also published in 2011 by Galantz. And this one I really liked. I gave it 4.5 out of five stars. It was just so entertaining. It actually follows Mercy, who is one of the Leopard Sentinels and she is an alpha female character. And she works quite closely with one of the lieutenants from the wolf pack that they have an alliance with. And it is about how the dynamics of alpha females and alpha males in a pack group and how essentially there is no one who is at the same sort of alpha level as her in her own pack and how that affects her relationships because she really doesn't want someone who isn't going to challenge her. And Riley, who is the Lieutenant from the Wolf Pack, he pushes all of her buttons in good ways and in bad ways. And they have quite a volatile relationship. Neither of them are willing to sort of back down. Neither of them want to actually take the back seat of being the, the leader of the, of the two of them. They are both very, very strong alpha characters. What I appreciated most, even though she kept reiterating it all the time, which was a little bit frustrating, but what I liked was that Mercy stood her ground and was like, I don't actually want to become a submissive little housewife because that's not who I am. She is a very wild character. She doesn't want someone who's gonna take care of her. She wants someone who is gonna trust her on the same level that she is. And it takes a while for Riley to come around to that, which I thought was quite an interesting dynamic. Also, interestingly enough, these are paranormal romance books, so there is sex in them. And normally the pattern of these books is that you sort of have a whole lot of sexual tension build up until about the 60% mark in these books. Not so in here. We got that in the first chapter and it was kind of great because these are two characters who know what they want and they argue about things all the time and they know that they actually need one another and they're just sort of unwilling to admit that to themselves for the time being because of course they're cross pack and they're, they're not sure how a leopard wolf mating thing would go. But it was just really interesting and I enjoyed it a lot. I really like Mercy as a character. She's probably the lead female character that I've liked the best so far in the series. So those are all the books that I read this week. In the comments down below, let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. I have a whole stack more books left for the Tome Infinity Challenge. I don't know if I'm gonna get through all of them by Friday, but I'm gonna try. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.